All right, everyone, thanks for joining us today on our weekly Ford Zoom call. We are joined today by Michael McDowell, driver of the number 34 Chicago Pneumatic Compressors Ford Mustang, headed to Chicago. It's only appropriate you have the hometown sponsor, right, Michael? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we're excited about this weekend, um, having uh, Chicago Pneumatic Compressors on board uh, in the Windy City for the street street course in Chicago. Looking forward to it. Um, it's a big weekend for us. You know, there's been a you know, a lot of, um, you know, hype going into this weekend and, and we definitely uh, feel like this is a great opportunity for us. So it's, it's a big weekend. All right. I know there are lots of questions out there considering this is the inaugural street course race. So uh, we'll let everybody raise their hand. Uh, if you've got a question for Michael and a follow-up, um, uh, why don't we start with Bob and then we'll just kind of, as we go, Mike, if we have any follow-ups, we'll just kind of free flow here. So Bob, why don't you get us started? Yeah, Michael, I'm, I'm curious, how much sim have you done? How much more do you plan to do? And how accurate do you think it actually is, considering, you know, they've had to do some repaving there in the last several weeks? Yeah, so I, I've been able to do a fair amount of sim work um, and have some more this week as well. Uh, as far as how realistic it'll be, I'll let you know on Friday or Saturday um, after we see it and walk it. Um, but like you said, Bob, there's, you know, there's been some repaves and some transitions smoothed out and some um, surface, you know, areas that have been added and, and redone. So, um, you know, I think that the it's probably exaggerating probably a little bit of the worst, but we'll see. And do you, is, how much is it going to be like, I guess we talked about over the weekend, but just how much is it going to be not finding that place of being aggressive as you would be on a road course to knowing that, um, you know, just trying to get through the hundred laps? Yeah, I think that you're going to be aggressive. I mean, all of our races are still going to be track position. So you're going to want to make sure you're, you know, staying up front, keeping track position, doing all the things that you need to do. Uh, but at the same time, you're, you know, very narrow and surrounded by concrete barriers and you can't make any mistakes. So um, that's what's the challenge of a street race is you got to go for it. But you, um, you know, when you take those risks, it's worth time. Um, so you got to balance when when to do that. And so do you see this as a I and mean, we often talk about road courses being, you know, a, a good opportunity for you, not that say that you're performance on ovals you know certainly has got you know certainly you have a shot there too but do you see this as you know do you do you equate this opportunity this weekend with the with your opportunity on other road courses or is it different um i i think that this one's a little bit higher for us um you know I, our road course program is solid we've seen that over you know the last year and a half with this next gen car um, but you know, I, I think going to a new course that nobody has any experience on tricky, challenging, it's going to play into the hands of, uh, guys that have done races like this, um, that adapt quickly. Um, you know, we are talking about the best drivers in the world, so they're going to figure it out really fast. I, I don't think that I have a quote unquote advantage. I just feel like my comfort level is probably a bit higher than majority of the guys that haven't seen a street course before. So, I mean, we think about this race as a, you know, race we, we need to go in to get into the playoffs. So that's what we're focused on. And just one more kind of looking ahead to, uh, to Atlanta. Are you aware, like, do you, have you looked in your shop? Have you guys gotten the new uh, or have you guys done the work yourselves as far as the changes to the, uh, chassis and, and things that are going to be in effect for Atlanta. Um, with all the front clip and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're up to, to speed on, on what we have to have for Atlanta. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of that rolled out a couple of weeks ago as we're preparing. So, um, you know, right now they're working on the uh, Atlanta car and it's, I'd say it's probably, hold on, let me look. <laughs> it's 70 percent of the way complete so uh, i think everything's rolling fine thank you yep all right thanks bob let's go to trey downey from mrn go ahead trey 
Hey, Michael, just another quick question on Atlanta. This will be the fourth time that you guys have raced on this quote unquote new Atlanta. Do you think everybody's kind of gotten a handle of what this new style of racing is about, or is it still kind of changing a little bit? No, I think it's changing. I think that the track probably threw us all for a little bit of a loop of just how much it aged in a year and how the grip level changed. So, um, you know, the, the first two races were, you know, you, you didn't really know exactly what to expect, but I feel like now we have at least uh, a pretty good understanding of what we need to bring back and things we need to do better. It, it has that element of drafting and runs and pushing and all that. Um, it's not like that's not there. Um, but I think handling is, um, is more of a, um, legitimate factor that you have to take in for this race. Um, especially as hot as it's going to be. And then after Atlanta, we head to New Hampshire. Um, hasn't been one of your best tracks over the years. What about yeah. that track has been difficult for you? I think that's an understatement. Um, yeah, New Hampshire by far has been, you know, a struggle for us. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what to pinpoint it as, you know, I, I feel like it's a, you know, a flat track, you know, short track, um, but different than Martinsville where Martinsville we've had speed, but it hasn't correlated in New Hampshire all the time. Um, and I, I will say this though, our, our short track program this year is way better than it was last year. Uh, Richmond Phoenix, um, those race tracks we were, um, you know, definitely feel like we closed the gap quite a bit. Um, so I'm optimistic about New Hampshire. Um, I go there optimistic every year. Um, but it's, it's no doubt that it's, it's been a struggle for us in the years past. So uh, hopefully we hit it right. And then you're kind of in that battle for the last playoff position right now. Um, if you were able to get in with the way that you've ran this year and the speed that you've had, would you be even more confident in your chances to make a run than you were a couple of years ago when you won the 500? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I feel like we had the speed in the tracks and the schedule in the playoffs way out, you know, lay out pretty well for us. Um, and I, I haven't done the statistics exactly, but I think last year we would have advanced had we made it into the second round. Um, I can't say that for sure. You guys about to verify, but we would have been pretty close. So, um, you know, I think that we're in a position where we have a bunch of road courses coming up. We have some good tracks coming up. We have one or two in there that aren't so good, like you mentioned. Um, so we got to manage those weekends well, and we got to maximize the weekends we know we can get a lot of points. I think we'll be right there. I really do. I think um, we'll be close to to being able to point our way in. But currently, we're just thinking about Chicago and how do we go win that race. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Hey, Heather Williams, welcome to the call. Go ahead. Ask your question for Michael. Hey, Michael, sorry about my camera. It doesn't want to work today, so I apologize that you can't actually see me. But um, uh, you, you mentioned Chicago and the barriers and just how different it is. I'm just curious a couple of things. First of all, what was your first reaction when you heard that we were going to Chicago? And then second, do you have any concerns about this weekend compared to other weekends as far as how to approach the weekend? Um, I was excited. I think, you know, street courses are so much fun and just great events and great, you know, um, opportunities to, to bring the race, you know, to the people, um, and, you know, doing some in the past and seeing just how cool of events street course racing is and how fast the cars look and the sights, the sounds and all those things. I was really excited about it. Uh, yes, there are some challenges, uh, no doubt there's some challenges. Um, you know, I think for all of us, you know, logistically just figuring out the flow and the routine of, you know, all the things that you probably think we wouldn't think about, you know, pit lane, making changes, um, you know, just in, out, where you're going to go, what happens if this happens, having a plan for those, you know, different scenarios. The on-track stuff, I'm not terribly concerned about. It's it's very straightforward. It's a street course, concrete barriers, 90-degree turns, uh, bumpy, uh, not a lot of runoff, and can't make any mistakes. Um, I think all that is pretty straightforward. It's just more of the, all the other logistics of uh, making sure that you're at the right place at the right time, have all the right stuff, and and can you know do the things you need to do. Thank you. All right, Heather, thank you. Let's go to Daniel McFadden. Hey, Daniel, go ahead. 
Hey, Michael. Um, first off, when was the last time you were in a street course race? Ooh, yeah, I don't even know. Um, probably 2006 or seven, I would say would be the last time. Um, at Montreal yeah. in 26, 2006, Montreal, maybe. Uh, oh yeah. If you count Montreal, then, you know, I, I, I think I did all the Xfinity races there all but one, but I was thinking more like long beach and, yeah. uh, places like that, but yeah, it's, it's been a while, um, for sure. You know, I think the, the biggest thing is just the visualization when you're sitting in the car and references and being able to adapt quickly to not knowing where you're going and, and finding the bumps and finding the markers and doing all those things. And, um, uh, you know, each track is unique for that. So it's just being able to do that quickly. I'm curious, what's the, what, what do you expect the aggression level to be when you're in a cup car that has bumpers, has fenders? Um, on a narrow course like this compared to an open wheel car, which is very fragile and you desperately want to avoid b b banging wheels and fenders. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm fairly unique in this response. I, I feel like street courses are so tough by yourself that your level of aggression is turned down sort of automatically because you're just trying not to make a mistake on your own, let alone when you're trying to set up a pass and things like that. Um, you know, there's, if you look at our style of road racing, you know, for sure it's super aggressive wheel to wheel, but we always have a lot of runoff and we always have areas that have a lot of forgiveness. So turn one in Indy, you bury it down in there because there's an oval grass access <laughs> roads um when there's a 90 degree concrete barrier you're going to think twice about burying it down in there it's just the reality of it and so um calculated aggression is going to be what wins this race and i don't think we're going to see a lot of um what we typically see on our road courses in in particular on the you know starts and restarts and things like that thank you Again, if you've got a question for Michael, we've still got a few more minutes left in our allotted time. By all means, raise your hand, um, and I'll uh, be happy to call on you. And right on cue, there's Dustin Long, who's probably been researching whether or not you would have advanced back when you made the playoffs a couple of years ago. Well, I have, Dustin yeah. probably had. Oh, he did. Yeah. Come on, Dustin, you got I, it? I, I did not, so I apologize. <laughs> um, hey, hey um, Michael, can you give me a, a sense of, I understand a passing zone is anywhere where the car in front of you struggles and you can <laughs> work in. Um, so, um, but how to set up a pass on a street course. And especially when I look at this course, and again, I know with 90 degree corners that if somebody, you know, drifts up or gets loose, you, you probably just stick your nose in. But if you're trying to battle for a, like, you know, first or something, somebody, a good car, how do you try to, with what this course, versus how do you set it up uh, because i know like on ovals a lot of times if you make a move in turn four it's a move you may you you started like in the process like a lap or so before and getting yourself in position how do you do that at a road course here yeah um i think it's pretty similar you have to to get yourself in position you got to figure out where you're strong um but i think a lot of the the passing is going to start off the corner it's going to be getting a good drive off of the corner to be close enough to to challenge somebody into the break zone. Um, you know, everybody's so good in the break zones. Now it's not like you can be five or six car lengths back and just bomb it in there. Um, so I feel like the passes are going to start, you know, the acceleration off the corner and getting close. Um, you know, the tricky thing about street courses is, um, you know, when you're following closely to the car in front of you, you can't see and you don't know where the apex is. You, you can't see the concrete barrier. So you're it's it's a process. And I think that's what I'm most excited about is is knowing that process and knowing how you have to set those things up and um, not being caught off guard and surprised by when you get close. The fact that you got to know where you're at. And um, so there's there's a lot of tricks to it for sure. And also you referenced pit road. And I wanted to ask you about that. This will be the first time this year with pit road, you go in the opposite way. So they'll, they'll you know, everything's backwards. Like at Watkins Glen in Indianapolis, you didn't have to do it at Sonoma, didn't have to do it at Coda. Um, one driver mentioned, you know, he always likes to have 
the sign in front of him. So like one little adjustment from his perspective is holding whoever's holding the signs push, pushes it out a little further since he's on the far side of the pit box. Um, what are what are challenges or what are things that adjustments that you have to make in you know pit road coming coming to your your pit stall and and getting in your pit stall as as uh, efficiently as possible? Yeah, there, there's definitely you know some challenges just like at Watkins Glen when you do it you know there um, because everyone's so used to their routine like you're talking about how you line up the sign and all those things how the guys jump all over how far away you are from the wall. Um, you know, so you definitely have to be intentional about you thinking about what you're doing and where you're at. Um, so for me, as far as preparing, what I do is I'll be at pit practice this week and running through it with the guys, um, you know, for myself and for them, just making sure that, you know, timing and, and choreography and, and we're doing all the things that we need to do. And, uh, Mike, you mentioned, you know, the, the guy that's holding the sign, he's making sure that he's putting it where you want it um, for that style of a pit stop. Um, so, yeah, everything's got to be buttoned up. You know, anytime there's anything that can take you off of your routine and um, muscle memory and what you're used to creates opportunities for mistakes. Right. And so these races are all about minimizing mistakes. So where do you like that? Where do you, how do you like to have the sign held in position to help you and get into into the stall? Yeah, I don't like changing anything. So um, I have them change to me, rather me change to them um, so that I'm lining up and doing exactly what I do every single weekend. And I don't I don't change that routine. Um, so have them shift and adjust to that. Thank you. I've right, got a couple follow ups here. Let's go back to Trey. Go ahead, Trey. So I did do the research and you would have gotten out of the, the first round last year with a 10 point cushion. Um, nice. But but I uh, just want to go back to Montreal was mentioned on this call. It's been reported that uh, a Montreal return could be in the works for next year. Would you be in favor of the Cup Series racing at Montreal? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, it was a great race, great crowd, uh, awesome town. Like everything about that race was a lot of fun. And, um, and you know, that I don't know if you call it a street race. It is a street race, right? But it's – it's kind of on its island there in a park and, um, and, you know, but it's a, a proper racetrack with, you know, a decent amount of runoff and some tricky areas, but I always enjoyed it. I think our next gen cars would put on a great race there, especially with the, you know, long straightaways and really aggressive brake zones be a lot of fun. Um, as far as whether or not that's happening, I haven't been in any of those conversations. I hear the, the same rumors that you all hear, but um, I hope, I hope so. It would be a, a cool event for, for sure. Thank you. All right, let's uh, finish it up here with Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. So, so Michael, I know in the the next gen era, it, we're, we're kind of no longer in the you have specific cars for st specific tracks anymore because you can take a car anywhere almost. But I'm curious with with how well uh, you performed at Sonoma and how fast that car was. Like, is that the car you guys are going to take to Chicago, or do you, do you or do you have any idea what car? Are you taking? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, no, it's not our Sonoma car. Um, sure. That's too fast of a turnaround for us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're a three or four week turnaround just to get everything right. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. You know, we talked about it this morning about having road, road course, you know, specific uh, cars in our fleet. And it's hard to do that with the limited amount of, you know, parts and pieces and, and what you're allowed to have in your allotment. Um, so no, this is not the Sonoma car. Uh, we will use the Sonoma car again, uh, on a, on a road course. Um, but it won't be this one. Uh, this car raced at, um, it raced at the Coliseum and it raced at Phoenix, um, is the last two, I believe it might've been one more in there, maybe Martinsville. Um, so yeah, this is not our Sonoma car. Um, I will say that as a driver, you want it. You want that Sonoma car, right? <laughs> yeah. But last year, we didn't um, have a road course car, and everyone we went to was pretty good. And so not that I got completely over it, um, but these cars have been um, pretty um, – I don't know what the best word to use is. They're pretty similar in – feel and build and all that that i haven't seen 
a real outlier. Um, but yeah, the racer in you is like, we need to, we need to turn that thing around and get it ready. <laughs> but the process that we've been using has been working. So uh, we'll stick to it. All right. Thanks. All right, Michael, 20 minutes are up here. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, I know it's going to be a busy week for you off the track too, in addition to on the track this weekend, yeah. but we look forward to seeing you in Chicago. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you guys having me. All right, everyone. Appreciate you all joining in on the call. We'll get a transcript out of this here in just a little bit. And uh, if you're traveling to Chicago, travel safely. We'll see you there. Thanks, everyone.